Hi my crafters, I'm Jan B and I'm an independent stamping up demonstrator. Today I'm going to show you how I made this diorama card. There are two or three different ways of doing this um, and this is the way I've chosen. Um, at some stage in the future I might show you other ways um, but for today this is the one I'm going to show you. Um, there are lots and lots of videos on YouTube showing how this is done. Um, it's quite straightforward. Um, the request that I received to do this card actually requested that I used the Whale of a Time designer series paper. Um, so that's what we're going to be doing today. So this is for you Sharon. Um, while I was doing this I had a problem in as much as when that pushes down can you see how the one buckles so if I can get this straight, I think you can see that that's buckling, can't you? It just doesn't seem to be enough room in there for it. Um, but the bottom doesn't seem to be quite so bad, but it's still, you know, not right. So I have practiced with this lots and lots. This is the very first one that I did. As you can see, I was in the mood doing Christmas cards um, for my practice goes. Um, that one wasn't too bad, let's move that out of the way, that one wasn't too bad but it is still scrunching up a bit. So I set myself a goal, <laughs> I had to sort it out. Um, as you can see it takes me quite a lot of um, card stock to do this. Um, this one didn't work out, this one was an improvement. This one worked out beautifully. Okay, so I'm going to show you what I did, um, how I got it to go like this for this one. Um, and it was all down to um, the scoring on this piece here. I finished up doing it as one piece of cardstock and then cutting it in half. And also I used my um, scoreboard rather than my trimmer. So whether I was doing something wrong on my trimmer or not, I don't know. Um, but if this really is the answer to the problems, it's going to be plain sailing. Um, if not, um, I'm not sure where I'm going to go from here. Um, so I will show you my first attempt at the um, Whale of Time. OK, you can see that I've used some acetate there to get some floating turtles. This isn't actually fixed in properly here which is why I can't actually show you very well um, but this one was buckling as well although that's not quite as bad as the others but it shouldn't buckle at all or at least you should be able to get around that. So let's see how we get on today. So let's move all of these out of the way. When I got this far, what I've done is I've actually used three complete sheets in there. So I'll be able to cut that off and cut that off. And at least I'm not wasting the bits in the middle there. Normally I use um, a retired colour. Um, I don't know why I didn't do that this time. I wish I had. <laughs> right, okay. So the cardstock you're going to be needing is... This is pool party and you need four pieces that measure four inches and five and three quarter inches. I will put the metric measurements down below and also the American. Um, for the American, I think all I need to say is where we've got five and three quarters, you just have five and a half. Otherwise, all the measurements are probably the same. I will double check it. So do check in the box below before you start cutting anything. Then you need a piece of pull party that measures 8 inches by 3 inches. Then you need a piece of DSP for the inside at the back and I'm using this. And this measures 3 and 3 quarter inches by 5 and a half inches. Then you need two pieces for the seaweed. There's one there and there's one there with the turtles. I have done these before um, ahead of time because it's 
a little bit time consuming um, but I will show you another one um, I'll start one off just to show you that I wasn't terribly careful about it plus the fact I need to show you how to actually judge where to cut your lines down to so I've got that one for my backing you will need at least two of these okay so what you would do is you'd cut your three and three quarter inches there and then that will leave you that piece there so that you can slice that across and then do the fussy cutting okay that was the one from there I've had to guess how far down to go on that one um, you could also use that design if you wanted and you could use that as your ones at the front you don't have to do the ones that I've done um, there are other designs there I think there's at least one other um, there's others where you've got complete like C views with um, not views but uh, with just a mass of seaweed in there so the choice really is yours there are options I like this one because it's got the crabs and the shells in it as well as well as that you also need two pieces of acetate and these measure about half an inch by three and three quarter inches yes three and three quarter inches and one piece which I'm going to put on the back partly to cover up those lines but also to give a white sheet so that you can do some um, greetings or something write your greeting or stamp and you could even decorate that a bit as well so plenty of options there oh and that is for the sentiment I've just done a little happy birthday up there so I'm going to start with this piece that's three inches by eight inches I'm going to bring my scoreboard as I say the fact that it didn't work on the trimmer it could have been that I didn't hold it straight or I, when I moved it along I didn't do it correctly I don't know um, but it has certainly worked out fine for me when I've used my scoreboard now all you need to do on here is to score it at every half an inch so that's half an inch one inch one and a half two inches two and a half inches okay oh, oh. That was at three eighths, don't do that. So that's half an inch, one inch, one and a half inches, two inches, and two and a half inches. Right, where I started that off incorrectly, I'm just going to push it back down with my trim uh, my score tool okay it doesn't get rid of it altogether but um, you see it? I don't know if you can see that can you it's left like the uh, the mark there yes you can um, but that's okay so once you've done that then you do need your trimmer to cut that because you need two pieces that are three by four Okay. Yep, that's good. So what we need to do is to fold these, fold these as a concertina. So you've got mountain, valley, mountain, valley. all I mean a bone folder that's one done it's just a bit quicker to do it like this it's a lazy way of doing it okay right 
So we've got our two pieces like this. Now, the first one of these, we've got four of these all together. Um, so I am going to take my background piece, which is this, and I'm just going to adhere that on there. And I've got a, should be an eighth of an inch all the way round gap there. Did I bring my, yes I did, my silicone mat. Oops, it was just dropped on the floor. That's my little bit of kitchen roll in case I need it. Put that under there. I've got a ceiling fan going because the weather is still very, very warm. Um, and of course it's creating a draft. I've had to turn it down from the fastest speed because I've done a lot of my fussy cutting ahead of time and I didn't want those to go flying off all over the room. So I'm just using Tombow to put this piece down. Um, tweezers. Now what I've done is for the front on here I've done two pieces together just to give it a little bit of extra strength because that's quite thin. Um, our cardstock's really good but even for such a, a length of that I think it needs a little bit of uh, support. I'm using our stitched rectangle um, dies. Now you can use any dies you like as long as you've got um, layering dies like that. Okay, they don't have to be oblongs, they could be circles, they could be ovals, they could be fancy shapes, just whatever dies you have where you've got um, matching like that, layering rather, like that. Now I'm going to bring my big shot up. Okay, now I'm going to be using a piece of paper over my die and papers to prevent it from getting too scratched. Right, now I'm going to take two pieces to start off with and in fact what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some um, removable tape so I oh that's clever good job I don't need any more okay so I'm just going to put those two together to make sure they stay together you can use Tom um, oh I don't know seal I imagine you can still use our new seal um, which replaces our snail um, as long as you stick your finger on it a little bit to hold it down um, right so those two and this is my largest one. This is number six. And if you put it on your cutting mat at an angle, it cuts a lot better than actually going right the way, then go through straight. Now I'm going to use wax paper on here. I'm doing this because my, um, it's, bit of an effort to try and remove the die from the cardstock and I always find if I use the paper a couple of times on the die it's such a big help. Okay now I'm just going to eyeball this and the only bit you need to watch is that this bit here is the same gap as that bit there and of course that it's straight. Um, is that straight? I think so. So what I'm going to do is I'll put that on top as well. I won't need it now will I because I've got the 
wax paper protecting it. Is that moving? Well, let's see what happens. Now, obviously, this is a bit more difficult because there are two pieces of cardstock there. Let's put a shim in there just in case. I don't think I need it, not with a uh, wax paper. Oops, didn't even do it, it crunched up. Okay, let's see what's happened there. Let's put that out of the way. I wonder if that has gone right the way through. Let's give it one more go. In fact, let's do it this way. And turn it slightly. That's always another good thing as well, if you turn it to a different angle. Right, no scrunching up this time. Well, it won't be easy for it because it's under the two mats now. So. Well, if that hasn't made it cut through, nothing will. Now this has happened to me on several of these pieces that I've done. I'll worry about that later. I've got two layers there which I can use for other projects. Oh, there we go. That one's off. Of course it's got the glue on it there. But that one's stuck for the time being. But we can sort that out. Right, so move that. Right, this is what I was saying. Quite often I get that left because I'm trying to do two sheets at the same time and I just snip that off with a pair of scissors. There's another one there. Okay, it's no problem. If you rather cut one and then do the other one on top and line it up, you can do. Um, I just feel that for me, I'm on a wing and a prayer doing that. Now that still has a few scratch marks on it so I'm going to put the other one on top. It means that the uh, stitches aren't quite as deep as those but I'd much rather have the non-scratched bit there. So now I've done that one, we do that and put one of these on top, line it up and then take the next size down which is number five, or the smaller of the dies that you're using, and then put that in the center. Okay, that looks about right. Try putting it face down. I know, you're shouting. <laughs> oh dear, oh dear. You can tell that I'm preoccupied, can't you? Okay. See that that's okay that looks straight to me let's take that one off and I'm not sure we need that but we'll do it anyway oh I've done it straight That's, you can see how much more difficult that is by putting it in there straight. I'm going to turn it now at an angle. I know you can't see me turning it, but you'll see it when it comes back through. See, much, much easier. Okay. There we go. That's another layer that I can use for something. We need all of this, all of this. And I think that is all we need the big shot for. So let's move those out of the way. 
You won't need that. I have to say that doing the um, Whale of a Time diorama was fun, I have to say. Um, I, as I, I did get in touch with Sharon and I did tell her that um, I didn't actually buy the set and eventually I did. I saw lots of things other demos were making and I thought, you know, I really like that. And it was just as handy. And on Monday, you're watching this on Sunday, on Monday, uh, my second pack of DSP is arriving. I've just used it so much. Right, I'm going to adhere these two together with Tombow. Try not to get too much on. I will blot this. I meant to check beforehand um, to see if I have already made a video of a diorama card. I think I have, where it's the one where it's just got the two bits at the side that get glued together. That was another style. And the other one... Um, I don't know really how to describe that. Right, so there's that. Put it around the right way. Make sure you've got it. If you're like me and you haven't got both sides equal, be careful which way you line this up. There we go. So it doesn't make it particularly thick, but it's just thicker. So now we've got our three layers. And to put this together, we're going to do the back piece first. And what we need to do is to put whatever adhesive you're using, if you're using our tear and tape or um, the Seal Plus, by all means, I'm using Tombow. Again, I'm I need enough glue without putting too much and I'm just going to put that right the way into the fold and then close the fold down. Okay. It only goes as far as the the bumpy bit in the um, fold. That one's done. Let's do this one. Yep. When you're doing this, what you need to do is to remember that the top one, this needs to be facing inwards, and that one has got to be face facing inwards. And turn this upside down because it's easier. If you're left handed, you might find it easier to go around the other way. Okay, right the way in. Yep, that's good. Yep, that's good. Okay, just give that a squeeze, make sure it's adhered down there nicely. Now what I'm going to do before I move on, I'm going to decorate my bit here and as I say I have done quite a bit of fussy cutting. So what I've got is this whale here, it was on the edge of a piece of paper so I thought he could go there. Okay, And then I wanted this mummy and baby I think. Well I thought that, oh that's right. I thought it's like a family, they could all go like that. With this one, with the, okay, that's not really fixed, I wonder how much you could see this. I felt that those 
whales were a bit too big. If I was doing like a 6x6 six six card, that would have been a lot better. But this, I think, lot works a lot better. So that's how I'm going to put it. Obviously, I don't know at the moment where my turtles will be going. But these whales, they are very easy to cut out. So I'm going to put him near the top. Um, I will keep him to the edge of the paper, I think. I'm not sure it really matters because it's all going to be like that anyway. So let's put the... So that's the dad, all right? And this is mum, and that's a baby. Family day out, swimming. <laughs> and I've also done the... I've used the whale punch, and I've punched out the spouts. Um, you know, the water. The trouble is, if it's only one size, This is what I've done for these, um, and a small one, what's on the other side, I can see one there that's really nice and dark, yeah, that'd be alright wouldn't it? Yep, let's do that for the mum. this one. There is, um, it may actually be that one, but the big whale on the designer series paper can be punched out with the whale builder punch. Uh, it's upside down. But, you know, the, the whale is quite easy to do by itself because there's no really fancy tricky bits. I wonder what this will look with the baby. Will it look silly? Apart from the fact it's coming off the top. Um, I know what I can do. I just do two little ones. It's one of these I can turn over. really. Well I don't want to do one of the big ones, I think it's just too big. Yes, yeah, so we have them both going in the same direction. probably won't get noticed anyway. So there we go. So far so good. I do prefer the darker colour, I have to say. Now, the smaller one, the one at the back there, I wonder if that's any smaller, any better that way. Oops, do, <laughs> in case you haven't done these quite right, like me, make sure before you put them on that you've got the best view there. Okay, that was obviously meant to be the centre. I got a bit showing all round, so that's what I'm going to do. Now this one needs to be adhered on this one here. Okay, got to go there, and likewise on that one there. So what I suggest you do, I think we do the turtles first. We've got to adhere those on there, so yes, that's going to be a lot easier. And I used blue dots for this. What I did was I 
put two at the top, two at the bottom, and then I put a little bit of uh, Tombow on it as well. That's because the glue dots will hold it steady now while the while to Tombow is actually drying. Okay, so I'm just putting a little bit towards the edge and in between the blue dots. Can you see that? Yes. Okay. So which is the... Oh, I'm forgetting which way round I've got to do this. Well, let's put this on first. Okay, so now that one, the turtle is obviously going to be down towards this side. Let me just double check which way round I'm doing this. Okay, let me just put a pencil mark on both of these. Otherwise I'm going to spend the rest of this video checking which way I'm going. Okay, so that's the top and that's the top. Right, let's do the next one. Just going to put a little bit of glue on there as well. I'm sure the glue dots will hold. I don't want to take any chances. Right now, this one you may decide you want it a bit further in the center. Yep, yeah, I'm going about there. Whoops, whoops, whoops. It is better if you watch what you're doing. Glue dots aren't the easiest of things to move. Do make sure you haven't got any glue showing around and coming out the outside. Now I have got some very sticky looking finger marks on there. that will be going in front of there and that is what's going to help me decide where I want to put my turtles. Now the turtles that I have, I won't be using all of them, can you see that? Yes you can. That one I think is absolutely brilliant because he looks as if he's looking straight at us. And this time I have gone for smaller turtles, like I've gone for smaller whales. Um, prefer the smaller turtles too. Oh, that looks quite good, doesn't it? Looking up. Okay, and this one, do you want to be looking out at us? Yes, that's going to be a lot nicer. Um, so, again, I'm going to use glue dots to start off with. So, by his neck and by that. Okay. Now a lot of this obviously is going to be just floating. And they don't have to be floating just um, straight across like this one could be looking up to there. This one looks really cheeky I think. Okay so we give him two glue dots. Not quite sure what position I want him in. Uh, we'll see where the 
glue dots go and just put some glue in between Yes, that's good. Okay, so we're now going to put this one in. Let me just erase that pencil cross. Let's put those two turtles back on there. I'm only putting the glue in the centre here because it's coming out quite thick which means it's going to spread and again up to the fold there I'm going to turn it around to do the other side Okay, I'll just keep it in the centre there. So push that, lay that down. Oops. Try and hold that one down as you're pushing this one over. that in a bit further. This is a beauty Tombow. Gives you that little bit of time to make corrections. I think that's going to go okay. Right so now the last one what we do is we stick this one on the outside. Okay, it should do it so that you don't see any of the fold there. That bit I have not achieved. Let's see how we go. I've got some bits and pieces left over so I can put some, I can decorate the front. Oh, no talk about decorating. I've forgotten my um, seaweed haven't I? Now this goes on here. Oh, I haven't cut it have I? So this should be five and three quarter inches long. What you need to do is, where's the one that's a complete piece? Right, I'm just going to cut this piece off so that I can show you. do is you need to know how far down you can cut so you don't expose that bit so obviously this bit would have been easier to do before I'd put that in there um, do I have a spare one anywhere I must do out all those that I've done here's one is that the, the one inside see the size of it yes that is Okay, imagine this is my blue one there. Before you do anything to it, take it like that 
here we go and lay your window on there okay now obviously this is going to vary depends on what depth you used so what once you've got your depth if you draw a pencil line there and to the end there and to the end there now I'm not going to do this too far otherwise it, I'm not going to be able to use it for an, another project but where I've got that paper line I'm not going to cut below it okay so I'm just going to come down a bit higher give it a little bit of a curve and then I'm just going to cut round as I'm approaching my pencil line I'm going to start curving again so that I don't have a straight line and then back up around and then down to the pencil line and curve and then back up around that let's see we'd let me show you what I've done can you see that I've curved it around before I start going around the next piece of seaweed I won't go below that pencil line or at least I wouldn't if that was a piece I was doing but because I've been silly um, that's going to be I suppose really I'm going to have to just live with this it's fine because at least it covers it all up as you can see this is quite straight along here because I was just guessing what it was going to be like. But in fact, let's put the glue on here. Right, that will be okay. Hopefully that will be okay. So I'm just going to put some on the seaweed that's going up there okay just those two little bits because I know that's not going to go through the window but it will help to keep it up there that will come down and now I can see these four pieces I can put a little bit of glue on as well Okay. Right, can you see what I've done? So you can't see that blue cardstock underneath there. Alright. So the last window is this one. And this is what I've used for here. And that is going to be far too high. That's a shame gonna have to cut it off lose the crabs I really thought I'd be able to use that okay so what I'm going to do is do it from this side that's my top the lowest bit is that bit there It's a shame we've got the crab's claws there. If I cut it off there, what would happen? I could always put my sentiment, couldn't I? Okay. It's there, not up there. It's right, excuse me while I talk to myself. Uh, yeah, mustn't come lower than that. Make sure that's straight. Right, you stay straight. Now line this one up. Right, so they're both straight. Now I'm going to cut that off. 
Oh no, I do keep that crab. I'm going to cut the other one in half. So line my pencil mark up in the cutting track. Make sure that's straight. And then whatever else I've got coming off the edge, I can just cut that. Okay. Crikey, I missed my cut line there. This is why I'm prepared to accept the blame if it was my scoring that went wrong when I used this. I can't cut a straight line. Um, I'm scared now. Go for it. Go and be brave. Still haven't done it, but that's going to have to do. But let me at least remove the pencil mark. I'm going to pop that on there and then cut off whatever I've got left over that side. A little bit of glue behind this bit and just towards the top there. Okay, I just need to cut this bit off. Let's get behind the back here somewhere. There we go. I don't think you're going to just stick down too small. Never mind. So now I'm going to pop this one onto here. That's it. And just take that off as well. So let's try this again. There we go. 
pretty good, isn't it? I'm pleased with that. And here, straight, almost. There's a little bit of a bend at the bottom there. But that's nowhere near as bad as it has been. And I'm quite happy I can live with that. So that's today's project. Oh, let me just do a sentiment. I have here, happy birthday, which is from the Itty Bitty Birthdays. No, Itty Bitty Greetings. That one there. And I'm going to stamp it in shaded spruce. Oh, I've got to put the back on as well, haven't I? Don't let me get away that easily. So this is just a scrap. Beautiful. I'm going to punch that out with the classic label punch which is far too long for that, but I can show you how to shorten that. Okay, so I'm positioning that towards the end of the point. Trying to make sure it's straight. He thinks it's okay. And then to cut the end bit off, You just put that end back in there as far as you want it. So you've got the same amount of white there as there. And then pop it out. Okay. Now, do I want to put it at the top? Do I want to put it on here? Or does it look too plain up there? Yeah, I'd like it on the top. And there's nowhere really, I think, that I can put whales or turtles on the front here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my bit on the back. Let me just blot this a bit. In the centre. could just leave this. It's only the fact that it's got these edges here that I want to try and cover it up. And also, by the way, this will fit into a regular envelope. Obviously, if you're going to stamp a uh, sentiment on here, do it before you put it, stick it on the back. You see it doesn't actually cover up the flaps there, but it does look better. And what have we got? We've got a couple of turtles and we've got some whales. at the turtles rather. We have one top, one bottom. These aren't too bad to fussy cut either. The worst ones I did was the one where I 
was fussy cutting the little seahorses. Oh my goodness, was that a challenge? I can't remember how many I did now, but it was something like sat here and did about 10 of them. Don't know where I get my patience from, really don't. There we go. That looks good, I'm pleased with that. And you two live to swim for another day. Okay, so that's today's project. Yep, I'm happy with that. And the envelope, let me just show you that. It's self fitting. And the envelope, oh yes, here we go. Okay. No making your own for this project. So there we go, many thanks for joining me today. I hope you enjoy this project and I hope you give it a go. And many thanks for the request, Sharon. I had a lot of fun with this. It was frustrating at times, I have to say, but at the end of the day, it's been fun. It was, I quite enjoy a challenge. So if anybody else has got any um, ideas of things that they'd like to see a video on, please don't hesitate to get in touch with me. Um, if I can do it, I will. Um, if I can't do it, I'll have a look at it and see why I can't do it and see if I can find a way around it. So there we go. don't know how much you can see there. Quite a lot. So anyway, many thanks for joining me today. If you have any questions, please leave them in the box below the video. Or if you have any comments to make, I'd love to hear from you and I do read everything that you, you write. If you'd like to purchase any of the products that I've used, there will be a link to my 24-7 shop in the box below and I will also list out all the products with the product codes as well. I'll put in there the measurements including the metric measurements and I will double check on the US measurements as well. If you've enjoyed my video and would like to be notified each time I upload a new one please click on the subscribe button down there in the right hand corner um, and then click the bell so that you do get the um, notifications and just a special note for my customers um, or any of my would-be customers if you don't have a stamping up demonstrator any everybody who spends over 30 pounds after they've used their coupons but before the delivery charge has been added out on I'm giving a pack of 48 6x6 six six sheets of retired designer series paper is a whole selection no telling what you might get but there will be at least minimum of two sheets of specialist paper like maybe you'd get glimmer paper or something so if you'd like to shop with me my link will be down below and I would really welcome your business in the meantime please take care out there stay safe and I look forward to seeing you next time cheerio